it's interesting to me this verse on its own uh, tells me that the old testament priesthood was founded based on the law of moses okay. now picture if you will the law as the foundation for the old testament priesthood home and then picture that when you read verses 12 to 14 it says that the law of moses was changed because there's a new building that was built for a new priesthood home and this new priest whose home it is now is not from the family of levi says the hebrews writer as mandated commanded by the law of moses but now there's a new system that comes by the order of king melchizedek we tend to forget that melchizedek was king so he's a high priest king prefiguring yeah. prototype so note verses 11 15 and 17. as a result the old testament priesthood was established founded on what the writer says was a shallow in other words temporary foundation that the writer calls weak and useless in verse 18. this is obviously a contrast being made between the new building founded upon this new deep indestructible verse 16 better hope verse 19 for this new priestly home this verse shows this was yet another fulfillment of an old testament messianic prophecy that we find in the all important psalm 110 that we major on because of verse one. But Psalm 110 is really all of it, which is only five verses, is amazing. I know we major on verse one, which is key, but the, the rest of that short chapter is quite striking. So if you look at Psalm 110 verse four, so we have that prophecy by the order of Melchizedek. But the previous verse three, God prophesied that this new priest to come according to a different order, would be his own procreated, that is begotten, human son. This shows that Jesus was already the son of God from the womb. And you will get that understanding more clearly in the Greek translation of this Psalm 110, which in the Greek translation is 109, mm -hmm. verse three. So in the same way, he was to be the new high priest from the womb the point i think is that the old testament received law given to moses that is uh, the legislation that he received at mount sinai let's call it according to hebrew 7 11 has now been changed hebrew 7 12 replaced by a new legislation given as law based on better promises by jesus hebrews 8 6 as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry which is as much more excellent than the old as the covenant Jesus mediates is better mm -hmm. since it is enacted on or upon better promises. If you look in your, in your Bible, NASB, NIV, this phrase, so it's translated as enacted or established upon. I want you to note here, though, that that phrase comes from a compound word, which means it's a word made up of other words. And those words are key to this whole thing I'm trying to show you. The Greek word nomos, which means the law or law, and to put, to establish. In other words, what the writer here is telling us in, in both chapters, Hebrews 7 and Hebrews 8, is that a new legislation has been established by Jesus. I think we can properly paraphrase Hebrews 8, 6, something like this. This new covenant has been given to you and me, Jew or Gentile, Christians, as Torah on the basis of better promises. I think that's a fair yeah, yeah. paraphrase. This new covenant law was established when Christ first came, first appeared, not at the cross only. That is, during his earthly ministry, not just when Christ died for you. Now, I'm speaking based on another verse in Hebrews 9, verse 11. So that word translated came or appeared is from a Greek word to means to arrive or to come on the scene. That is the scene of history, human history. Note the parallel with the affirmation king, 
high priest Melchizedek, a parallel that comes from Genesis 14. This figure of Melchizedek, rather mysterious, suddenly appears, but he's already appearing on the scene of human history as both high priest and king of the Most High God. That's the parallel with Jesus. This new covenant legislation, that is the law of Jesus, was ratified or confirmed by his death. According to another verse in Hebrews 9, 16, the one who made it, that's a key phrase at the end of Hebrews 9, 16. When did Jesus establish the new covenant? He could not have done it at the cross. The men could barely speak. Did he do any miracles on the cross? Well, they challenged him to do miracles on the cross. He didn't. Yes, the cross is massive for our Christian faith. It's a uh, figure of the resurrection to come. Yes, the blood of Jesus is all important. It's supposed to uh, wash you in a spiritual sense of all your sins. But... It is what Jesus did before the cross. He's the king high priest before the cross. He's the new covenant maker, new covenant legislation, law maker. Not the same law as the one from before. Hebrews 7, 18 and 19, please. It was set aside. So let us move into the new glory, the, the better promises that we can only find in the new covenant and the law of Jesus established mm -hmm. during his earthly ministry, not at the cross. 